Good morning, brothers and sisters. Here's another word from the Lord for you today. Um, I hope you've had some rest during the night and that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding kept your heart safe in Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise. Holy Father, we come before you this morning, Lord, to magnify and to glorify thy name. Father, based on Psalms 100, we just want to enter into your courts with thanksgiving. So, Father, I need to your gates with prayers. Father, we thank you for everything. We thank you for everything, for what you've given us, for who you are. We thank you, Father, for children, for families, for our bloodlines. We thank you, Lord, for the daily food you provide, for the jobs, for the wisdom, for the knowledge. Father, we thank you for your creation because you created a place for us to live, earth. Lord, we thank you for technology. We thank you for everything, Father, that you have given us and everything that you have created under the sun. Lord Jesus, we praise you. We bless you. We lift up and we magnify your name. We thank you, Jesus, Lord. We thank you that you laid your life down at the cross, that we are now sons of God. We thank you, Father, for your goodness, your mercies, and your grace. Oh, Lord, we magnify thy name, and we declare who is like unto thee. Who can compare to thee, O God? You are worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Lord, I bless your name. Lord, I praise your name. Lord, I magnify your holy name. God, you are awesome, glorious. Oh, God of victory. Oh, we exalt thee, oh God, we exalt thee, we praise thee, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, Father, Father. Oh, this fullness of joy in your presence. Oh, we adore you, Lord. We adore you. We put you first. We deny ourselves, oh Lord. We pick up the cross and we follow you, Jesus. We lean not unto our own understanding. In all our ways, we acknowledge you and ask you to direct our paths. So, Father, as I bring the word forth to the brothers and sisters today, I ask, Holy Spirit, that you will fill my heart and my mouth with words. I've, you've, given me, you've given me some points here that you want me to mention, but, Father, build on them and speak through me as your mouthpiece, Lord God Almighty. Speaking to everyone collectively what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Holy Spirit, you please give me a word for a nation. Right, I'm feeling right here where I am, United Kingdom. So, Father, I lift the United Kingdom up before you now, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord, for building up where has been torn down. Father, thank you for circumcising the hearts of the leaders of this country. Father, thank you, Jesus, for speaking your word to their hearts because your word is quick and sharper, quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to dividing asunder the bone and the marrow. Lord, any heart you can change. You set up kings and you remove kings. God, only you can do what man can do. So Father, I lift this country before you now. The leaders, those in <clears throat> position and in authority, O oh God Almighty, O oh Father, change their hearts, touch their hearts, Father. Touch their hearts that them and their households might be saved and that this country might become a strong, godly, God-fearing country run and led by your spirit once again, Father. Oh, Father, I pray for the economy of this country, Lord Jesus, that you will give them wisdom, Lord. Give them wisdom. And how the economy should run. Lord, it is written in your word, Father. Guide them. Guide them by your spirit, O oh Lord. To make the correct decisions. 
that the people of this country and of this nation will not suffer from bad decisions and wrong choices made by leaders. But that Father, because you are a loving God and you see to the just and the unjust, that this system and economic system will be stabilized all oh, to your glory, honor, and praise. Father, thank you, Lord, that you're bringing revival in this country. I pray for the lost souls, for those who don't know you in this place, Lord. I pray, Father, that you will touch their households, Lord. You will touch their hearts. Father, I pray that your presence will be in every household in this country bringing people to their knees to weep and to cry out, Oh God, oh God, save me. Save me, oh God. Save me from where I am. Jesus, I make you the Lord and Savior of my life. And I believe God raised you from the dead. Father, visit them in their sleep. Visit them in dreams. Visit them in visions, Father. Even visit them, Lord Jesus, personally. Give them personal appearance. Because, Lord, there's no one who has seen thee, Father, who have remained the same. No person has seen God, the only one and true living God, and remained the same. So, Father, my heart, my heart yearns and inside is a cry in my heart, O oh, Father God, for the souls of this country. Father, I pray for those in hospitals now who are lying on the hospital beds, Father God Almighty, who are not rooted in thee, Father God, who haven't given their lives to you, O oh Lord. And doctors are speaking curses, words of curses over them. You only got 10 minutes left. You only got 15 minutes left. You only got an hour left. Lord, I pray now that by your grace, you will save their lives, Father. Send your children in the towns where they are to these hospitals to minister a word to them, Father God Almighty, to minister a word to them, Lord God, that they might be saved that they can come back with a testimony. Oh, Jesus, you are Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for those in mental hospitals who Satan has bound up their minds and bound them up, Father. I command the devil to let them go. God has a purpose for their lives. In Jesus' name, loose them now. In Jesus' name, and be gone into outer darkness and return no more forevermore. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I lift Jerusalem before you. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Father God. I pray for the safety and hedge of Jerusalem. You said all are not yours, Lord. But Father, those who are not yours, I bring before you, along with those who are yours. And I pray, Lord, your blessing upon them. You will keep them safe, Lord God Almighty, and that your spirit will move around their hearts and that you will chip off the stone and everything, Lord God Almighty, that's been hindering them from receiving you and hindering those who have received you you from expanding and growing more more lord of god almighty in you so father i lift them all before you holy father and i thank you that you who have started a thing will see it through to the end lord thank you for shielding israel and protecting it from the forces that's about to come against israel and holy father god almighty thank you lord thank you jesus for preserving them preserving them according to your word lord god almighty and keeping them intact. I pray for their souls. I pray for the land of Israel. I pray blessing. Israel, the Lord bless thee. The Lord bless thee. The Lord bless thee. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for President Obama, Lord. That you will continue to do work in his heart and in the White House. Lord, over the nation of America that's been a blessing to the world. I pray, Father God Almighty, that your glory will shine over that White House. I pray, Father God Almighty, you will circumcise the hearts of the leaders of the United States, Lord God Almighty, because their decisions will affect innocent people. Father, I pray for those, Lord God Almighty, that the decisions they are making, Lord, you will cause them by your spirit to change the wrong decisions they have made, Lord God Almighty, and to withdraw 
the wrong things that they have put in place. I pray a blessing over America, every city, every nation, every town. The Lord bless thee. The Lord bless thee, America. The Lord bless thee. The Lord bless thee, neighboring country, Canada. The Lord bless thee indeed. South America, the Lord bless thee. Central America, the Lord bless thee. Caribbean Islands, the Lord bless thee. Africa, the Lord bless thee. Australia, the Lord bless thee. New Zealand, the Lord bless thee. Philippines, the Lord bless thee. China, Japan, the Lord bless thee. The Lord bless every country in this world. In Jesus' name, the Lord bless thee. The Lord bless thee indeed. Hallelujah. Rushi baba basse corro basta carra basse che robo bobo se cambassa la labaste robo bobo sti carra basta la labatta e robo bobo si che si carra basta cain raba baba se bobo bobo se si carra basta Hallelujah right The Lord has put some things on my heart this night and this morning and um, as I said, I'll get back to you with um, some protocol for what God is doing here. Now, um, you see what's happened is that um, th there might be one or two scriptures used here today, but I'm just bringing what the Lord has put, you know, put on my heart. Um, you see what the Lord has done. Is that the Lord has brought this at your convenience, right to your doorstep, right in your hands, on your mobiles, in your computer devices. He's brought what he's doing right in front of you. You know, there, there may be some who, who at the minute isn't really able to probably attend church as often or as they would like. But God is bringing what he's doing in the spirit right to you in the hand, right on your mobile devices, right on your com computers. Now, this that God is doing, um, I believe the fivefold ministry is going to come out of this. I never chose myself to do this. This is the instruction that the Lord um, gave me to set this up. And yes, he will fill my mouth with words. I'm just being obedient to what the Lord told me to do. You know, his ways are higher than our ways. So, um, you know, the fivefold ministry is going to come out of this. And for each person that's here, the Lord has called you here. Because the Lord told me, go and get the friends that I had and bring them here. So God has called you um, to this voice in your prophetic voices. He's called you here for a reason. And um, because he's put gifts inside of you that I believe he wants to activate, that I believe he don't want as you come out, for example, those who have come out or finished your internship course, because I've started at the internship course, prophetic internship, and um, I remember one time Prophet Rusted said that some of you will will be well the Lord will call to teach others and different things. I remember him saying that one time. I, I never planned it, I never sat down and you know thought that let me go and, and and step out into something that God hasn't called me to do. Uh it's a very dangerous thing. So um you know but the Lord has put gifts inside of you that he wants. To use and he doesn't want to lie dormant he doesn't want you know for those who finish the prophetic course he wants to advance you to the another level now into ministry into the calling that he's placed on your life it might look to some of you that um oh it's just something on the internet someone made an internet page and and oh, oh and this and that um who he think he is well Who I think I am, um, I'm just a child of the Most High God, following the Father's instruction. That's 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 who I am, basically. You know, a child of the Most High God, following His Daddy's instruction to bless His children and to 
lead them in that place where he's taking them to. So if there are any concerns about that, um, <laughs> ask the daddy, ask the daddy, Abba Father, and he can give you every answer and insight into why um, he's done it this way. Right. Point, I've got a few points here, so you might see me looking down at times. Um, the prophetic gifts. <clears throat> Not only the prophetic gifts, but I'll say like this, the gifts of the Spirit. The Bible says every true and perfect gift is from above. And to have God's gift inside, to me, is a privilege. <sighs> to me, wow, God has put his gifts inside of me and every good true and perfect gift comes from above. From the Father of lights. You know, these gifts inside of us are very precious. Don't take them for granted, you know. They are very precious gifts that God has given us not for our own selves, but to be a blessing to others. Well, yes, yeah, some part of it will be for ourselves too. Like you speak in the spirit to edify yourself also. But yes, to be a blessing to others. And um, I just want you to remember that the thief come to kill, to steal and destroy. And we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. I know it's been repeated a few times. I just let the Lord say it how he wants. And spiritual wickedness in high places. This is in no way to condemn or judge anyone or to single any person out. I'm speaking to yourselves collectively and what I say to you goes to me also. It's also for me to, to take and listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Be careful not to let the enemy try to attack your gifts with a spirit of um, with a spirit of gossip. Gossip has torn down many ministries. Gossip has torn down churches. Gossip have pulled leaders have caused leaders that God had a plan for their lives to quit. And to leave ministry. Because that happened to me. I was at one church a while back. And I was more or less appointed to be the head, head evangelist. And as a result of gossip. If I study the foundation of it. As a result of gossip. I left that church. I left that church and that position as a result of gossip. You see, when I was when I was back then, I didn't to be honest, I didn't feel I understood the things that I understood then. But I believe the Lord had me there because he saw, you know, the Father sees the potential. To him be the glory and not myself, but he sees the potential. So um, I, yeah, I end up leaving that, that church. And um, as a matter of fact, I don't know, I think many people has, have left since then. And um, I'm not sure, but I'm not, that's, that's where that was then. <coughs> so gossip. Gossip is a spirit of witchcraft. And at times, it, it, for some people, it, I don't know, it might feel comfortable, but it's actually the enemy coming through a person to destroy their gifts. Well, they can't destroy the gifts. Let me put it this way, to, to contaminate their gifts with a foul spirit, to bring distraction, to destroy others, to hurt and to wound others. That spirit of gossip is very dangerous. So I just felt together, as the, you know, as the body of Christ, as the Lord has put this on my heart. So, you know, again, if there are any concerns, ask him, you know, the same spirit that's in me is in you. So ask him. He said, you have not because you ask not. So ask him. 
to you know as you as as we come here we're all different people and you know we're probably different parts of the world and um, even in your churches when you go to the different days you worship and you fellowship be careful with the spirit of gossip God has um it, it, it will it will destroy lives and it'll even destroy you and it will distract you and it will distract others so yes we're supposed to walk in love and unity but always remember you can't change a man i can't change a man only the holy spirit can change that person and convict them to repentance neither me or you can he can use us as a mouthpiece but only the Holy Spirit can change the person. So often we're trying and trying and trying to change people and that's wrong. God didn't tell us to do that. So remember, when you're in a situation, if persons are gossiping, get out of it. Get out of it. Get out of it. There's some friendships that are even best to cut off. If a person is in gossip, you're not cutting them off because you don't love them nor you hate them. You're cutting them off because your eyes are focused on Jesus. And because you've come this far, you're not prepared to let Satan distract you with his devices. To let Satan distract you with his evil plan and his evil way. You know, you have said, Jesus, I've made you Lord and Savior of my life. You are Lord of my life and your will be done in my life. I haven't come this far to let the devil steal from me what you are doing and what you've put inside of me. Okay? So, um, avoid, avoid um, gossip. And again, in your local churches and, and, and even here, and because this is going to go big as the Lord says, you know, this is his. He, he will expand it. So, watch out. People will come. Even people that yourselves will invite is not because you did, it's because the Lord tell you to do it. People will come. It will expand, it will increase. And be careful with, with, with clicks, little clicks, little, just for your own selves, you know, this is not, oh daddy. <laughs> no, because um, I have here probably a hundred Bible verses that God is a God of order. He's not a God of confusion. You know, when we go to our local churches, when the pastor or, you know, the leader says, stand, we stand, sit, we sit, we worship, we worship, because God is a God of order. And um, the Lord has, you know, want me to bring these things forth um, in love, you know, because God is love. It is never rebuke. It is never to condemn, but it's to edify and it's to open your eyes that you can see what God is doing that you don't let in this season where it is you know what your correct calling is and what God is really calling you to do and the blessing and the advancement and promotion be stolen from you through a spirit of gossip through, through the thief who comes to kill, steal and destroy no, God doesn't want that to happen because every person that's here he's called you for a reason so you know, in your daily lives and stuff, avoid clicks and little, little, you know, these little pockets of gossip and little pockets of complaining and murmuring. Because I can tell you where that happens, where that happens, the spirit of the Lord is not there. The spirit of the Lord is not involved in gossip and clicks and little gangs and little, and little undercover devices. So avoid these things. And if anyone accidentally had fell into this cat, when I say not category, but you know, well, yes, that the enemy has tried to come against them to get them involved in these things and, you know, to pull them in that direction. Always repent. Just go to the Lord and say, Father, sorry that I was distracted. I got in a spirit of gossip or slander or I, I, I was talking against people in authority or, or I was you know, plotting against people in authority. And Lord, I realized this was wrong. Father, you said as far as the east is from the west, you will remember my sins no more. I believe I've, I've, I fell into error. I'm sorry. I repent. Please forgive me. I receive your forgiveness. I am washed and cleansed in the blood. I move on. That's how simple it is. He said he remembered them no more. But repentance, 
is the key to continue on the journey. You know, people don't just shake it off and think it's okay. No, you need to come to repentance and receive the Father's mercy and His forgiveness that was paid for at the cross. And you move on. You can't ignore repentance. Um, the Lord has been kind of putting on my heart too that um, in, in, in this, this that He's doing, because He's training the fivefold ministry, and there are others too, potentially, if it is not at this time, it probably will be as time goes on. But these are potential people here because the majority of you came from, I believe, the prophetic internship groups. Where you, you, the prophecy has been activated in you. And God has asked you to prophesy. And he doesn't want you to just keep the gift inside. It's not being a blessing to others he wants you to use it that you can be a blessing to others but he wants it to be done in this place in a in a in a order in an orderly manner he wants it to be done that for example let me let me put it this way right he wants it to be a place where we are focused on what he's doing in the spirit and what the Lord has told me he's doing in the spirit is that he's bringing us to a higher place in him, in position, in authority. And, in, in, you know, because we're seated with him in heavenly places. So he wants us to focus more on, on the prophecy and the prophetic. In terms of, you know, we prophesy over nations, we prophesy over towns. Yes, the Lord might put a personal prophecy in your heart for someone, you know. Singing prophetically, that brings healing and deliverance. You know, that's all part of it too. You know, in the prophetic arm, um, someone might put a psalm up, a Bible scripture that is prophetic also because then you look at it and something rises up in the spirit and the Lord gives you a word. But I believe the Lord is more or less saying, um, or, or, or personal, or personal, or deep personal stuff. He wants us to, to take that to him, more or less. How should I word it? He wants, he wants us to take that to him, more or less. You know, and when we come into the closet, into our prayer room, into our prayer time, to take that where now we can go to the Father in prayer and, and um, you know, bring it forth to him. Because um, it could cause, at times it could cause distraction from others, what he's doing. That they are focusing on the prophetic and bringing the gifts out. And suddenly they're looking at someone's... Um, they're putting all of their time into, into that thing. And before you know it, they're all caught up and they're all wrapped up. And they're all tied up and they've completely been distracted. So the Lord more or less wanted me to... You know, just to tell you to... In, in the personal areas, take it to Him in prayer. Or, because we can't forget our, our brothers <coughs> and sisters who... You know who have the 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 e church. You know, there's the e church there for different prayers and different things because we still respect the different ministries. And um, you know, of course, if someone here there's an urgent prayer, prayer request because we're in the you know we're in this group. Of course, you know what I mean. I mean, it would be obvious that you know you you just ask that something pops up urgently. You know, to hey brothers and sisters, this is something just happened. You know. That, that's that's what it, you know, we, we in these emergent prayer. Yes, because we're all here together, you know, as the body of Christ and we're supposed to pray for one another. But I'm just telling you the protocol that the Lord set out for this specific voice in your prophetic voice. And as he said to me, it's in the name. It's in the name. And um, <clears throat> there's certain things, if you're not sure, for example, what to what to post. Could you please, if, if, if you don't mind, could you please ask me or, or let me pray with it for you or, you know, message me in the box and we can pray with it together to seek the Lord because uh, even myself and everything I come to you, I don't just come and then decide to do a video. No, I seek the Lord first before I even speak to you. I ask him what he wants done because, you know, he has a specific plan for this specific um <coughs> for this specific voice in your prophetic voices and um, 
I mean, if it's if it's someone who I don't know, you know, probably feel well, oh, this is not the place where I want to be. Um, this is all this rules and this is that. No, because it's not rules. If you go to church or you wherever you wherever it is, you probably attend locally where you live. You'll find in your church disorder. There's, there's a protocol that the Lord has given the man of the house. That's the protocol that the Holy Spirit gave him. That's what um, the Lord told the man of the house to do. He has to follow God's instruction. And I'm only telling you what the Lord said to me. So um, let us focus, for example, if someone puts a word up, pray on this word and see where God is taking this word in the spirit. Okay, people might feel something on this word. You know, we're prophetic. You might prophesy over this word. And, and okay, fine, it stops. Then someone puts something up. You know, just, just follow that. It's like little streams, gushes of water. Just follow them. Just follow. See what the Lord is saying. And I feel this is what the Lord is saying. Focus on what he's doing. The words that come. Pray on it. You know. Comment on this word. Yes, Lord. Build it. Build it. Yes, Lord. You know, go with the flow of the words. And see where God is taking this whole thing. He wants us to be focused on what he's doing and not just, you know, jump in and say, um, you know, we are going to do our own thing. The Lord told me something about three months ago, two months ago. The Lord said to me, son, this is what my children are doing with me. Listen to this very carefully. A husband, I'll, I'll put it this way, a husband, for example, and a wife. A husband says, oh, I can come in three, four, or five o'clock in the morning. My wife is soft. She don't mind because when I get in, she's going to be, oh, honey, you get home safe, so that's fine. It's okay. So I'll just come home. I'll just go away for five, six days and just return home. And Oh, you okay, honey? Yes. What that person is doing is taking advantage of that person's kindness. The Lord said to me that's what his children are doing with him. Oh, you know, but... This grace, God forgives me, this grace, so they go and do things. He said they do the same thing. They go and do things and then say, oh, but you know, his grace, yes, he forgives me. Yes, he doesn't have anything against me. Don't you know when the Lord said that? It hurt me how he feels. Look what we are actually doing with him. Because he's a gracious God and because there's grace, we are using that. We are doing things and then saying, you know, oh, well, you know, the Lord, he knows anyway. He's not a God that judges. We are using, look how we are using his grace. His grace is supposed to enable, empower us not to do these things. The Lord said to me, son, that's how they're treating me. He didn't say don't love them. It's not a matter of love, but he just felt it. And that was personal for the Lord to tell you that, man, he's feeling hurt. He said, look how my children are treating me. You know, this grace, oh, his grace is sufficient. So they go and do all kinds of things. And then say, oh, yes, Lord, forgive me. You see how you see how we treat the Lord? That's how we treat the Lord. That's how we treat the Lord. And if this bear witness to, to anyone's heart, what I did is that I repented. Because I used to do that in times I find myself doing that. Not, I'm not talking about things of the world. You know what I mean? Like the Lord told me too. If your church service starts at 10 o'clock, you should be there before 10. What people do, they come in 11, quarter past 11, they keep God waiting. You see what I'm saying? Now the, now the Lord has given the man of the house a protocol that church will start at 9 or 10. Before people get to church, before the time church starts, they walk in all kinds of times after, oh, I go to church, God don't judge me, I ain't condemned. We know you're not condemned or judged, but you see how we treat God's grace. So, you know, I just pray that the Lord will speak to you through this. So that's what the Lord told me, you know, the things of God. For example, if someone go to work and the boss says, well, you'll be here at nine because you're getting money. Believe me, 10 minutes to nine, people will be at work. If the boss says, well, from today, this is it. Um, you're working a double ship, your baba, your bubba, because it's in all in the contract, they'll do it, yes, because they're getting money. How much more then should we respect the things of God? This is a thing of God that the Lord was saying, you know. How much more then should we respect the things of God and hold the things of God to heart and respect it and respect the way that God has chosen to do his things, you know. 
but we give man the glory. Oh, you know, oh yes, my boss said it. Oh, we're running. We can't wait. The boss says it. So we're running. But God has said something and it offends people. You see? So these are areas I believe as a body of Christ we need to repent. And we need to go back to the Lord and really cry out to him. And say we are sorry for this mentality and this way of thinking. You know? Now, I know, listen, churches, for example, I'll give you something else the Lord told me too. Now, we know it's not about the garment that you wear at the church. No. But listen carefully. My, my, my work has a works party oh, for the employees. So we put on the best suit and tie. We put on the best clothes. But then, when it comes to God's house to worship in His presence, we wear anything. Now, you see, you, you, do we understand something, how we actually treat God? Oh, because he's loving. Oh, he doesn't hold it against us. Oh, he doesn't condemn, the, condemn us. We know that. But study how we treat him. We treat you. You see how we take God in content. You know, you remember when we read the Bible verses from Old Testament that Israel, they took God in content many times. And what happened to them as a result of that? Sometimes they can't understand. Why is it that, you know, and there's some people thinking, why is it nothing's going well with me? Why is it that I'm a Christian and all these problems, all these things are coming my way? Sometimes we need to rethink what we're actually doing. Is God punishing you for the content? No. He loves you. His grace is sufficient. He forgives you, yes. But as a result of your actions, some things has happened that has given the enemy a foot way in to come and torment you and to harass you. Yeah, so we, we need to take the things of God very serious. One time, I, I at that same church I was at before, you know, growing, talking about a while back, um, before they called me into this evangelism thing, one day it was, oh, I don't like the worship music. And I was reading a book and the Lord spoke to me and said to me, son, worship is not for you, it's for me. I'm the one who decides if I like it or not. It's for me, not you. <gasps> I repented never ever again never ever again have I ever criticized worship music it is not for me worship is to God so sometimes we need to get these things right that we don't fall into the wrong categories that we don't you know because God is love and stuff and we don't you know fall into the wrong category that we say Lord you don't love me no he does but you have done some things that has given the enemy a foothold can I tell you what happens? When we do certain things, here is Jesus walking hand in hand with us. When we go to the side, he stops here and wait until you come back. As you're walking away from him in these things, he, oh, please come back. You know, I love you. There's no need to do this, but he ain't following your way. You got to come back to him. You got to come back to him. You know? So, uh, yes. Praise God for his goodness in opening our understanding. Because the Bible says that we're supposed to come off of milk. And I more or less feel the Lord saying in the spirit, here's a place where we will eat solid meat. We will grow in the prophetic, the fivefold ministries. There are some people who are already in the offices of apostles and pastors. This is a place where like-minded people will come sharing the same spirit. So for those who before I felt the Lord said probably hasn't been so strong and the Lord has called you here. The reason he's called you here is that for you to participate because he will give you strength. He will pull you to the others, sorry, to the level as the others. He will pull you in that one spirit. Just deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow him, you know. So seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all other things will be added, meaning just seek his face. Come and prophesy. Come and give the word of the Lord. And as you're doing that, he will strengthen you in, in your physical bodies, in your spirit man, in your mind. You will just, healing will come automatically because you have sought his kingdom first. Praise the Lord. And hallelujah. <clears throat> I think I covered a few points in that message so let me just cross that one out right I 
can see there's some of you um, in the spirit who takes this very serious. The Lord knows who you are and the Lord showed me and told me who you are. I know you, who you are, your names. That you take this serious. You take this with childlike faith. And you know in the spirit, this is not about me. This is what God is doing. And the God, and I'm going to say the God, twist my words. And the Lord, <clears throat> not and the God, and the Lord wants you to know that he's building you and taking you to that place that he promised you he will take you to because he's faithful to his promises and faithful to his covenants. He knows who you are. He's told me who, who you are. He's shown me the ones who are active and the ones who are participating. He's showing me everything that's going on. He's showing me, he's, he's even this morning been telling me some of your thoughts, what you're actually thinking, how you actually see this thing. So yes, um, so yes, the Lord knows who you are. The ones who take this serious, who sees what God is doing, you know in the spirit what God is doing, you know your hearts is from God. You, you take it at heart, you take it with childlike faith. You're very interested, you're very enthusiastic, and you are so happy to see what God is doing in the, in, in the spirit. Again, the Lord says, hold on, you're, 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 you're coming up. He's taking you to that place that he's promised you. Now, is that for some and not the others? No. But the Lord is, is talking about, he can, he's talking about the hearts who have that willingness. You know, the kingdom of God comes with, doesn't come with obs observation. So if, if you don't observe, what do you do? You get your hands, as we say in English, you get your hands dirty, you get involved in it and become an active part of it. <coughs> so, you know, um, for those of you who are still growing in the word, I'm still growing in the word, we are all still growing in the word, just come and let your focus be on what is going on, read read what people are writing and <clears throat> prophesy and you know and, and follow follow the trend in the spirit so that we can all flow in this move of God in one unity one accord you know <clears throat> get into that point in place that the Lord <clears throat> has called us to be with one hand together in unity we need to be we need to function with love and to be unified so please again guys if you if you feel in the spirit that is a spirit of causing want to cause strife or something or, or there's a spirit that's that's something that's not right that you that you feel not right let me know in the messenger and I'll pray about it I'll bring it before the Lord and I'll pray about it um I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, we do it this way, if that's how you feel, if that's how you feel, um, because the Lord has instructed me to don't spend too much time in, you know, stay focused on the main page, on the main page, so um, I'll tell you what, bring it to the Lord in prayer and the Holy Spirit will tell me, because that's what he's doing, he's telling me everything that's going on on and there are certain things he's telling me too that's going on be behind the screens. So uh, just take it up to the Lord and he will filter it down. He will filter it down in Jesus' name. Right. Mm -hmm. Um another person here um <clears throat> you haven't been well and the lord wants you to know that he sees you and he knows your heart and you've cried out to be used by him so hard it echoed in his ears the lord says keep your eyes focused on him let the gifts 
that he's put inside of you come out in this place. Because he wants to use you. Don't be sidetracked. Don't get caught up in um, in certain in certain things, certain situations, certain conversations. The Lord said to tell you, and this word will minister to your heart, who, whoever it is. Stay focused on him because he's bringing you to that place also that he promised you he will lead you into. And that's the promised land. Just stay focused on him. He knows what's going on on the inside and, and around. Just stay focused on him. Don't mind these distractions of the enemy. You know, he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. But God wants to see his plan to completion in your life. So stay focused on him. He hasn't forgotten you. Remember, no storm lasts forever. If you listen to the news and you hear, oh, there's a storm by morning or the next day, the storm is gone. No storm lasts forever. And sometimes we don't know how long a season lasts in our life either. But it's never forever. It is never forever. So you could rejoice and know. A storm never lasts forever. That storm is designed. What the enemy meant for bad, God will turn to good. But God or God is still getting us on the other side. So it make, makes it easier for ourselves when we stay focused on Him and what God is doing in our lives. God bless you, mighty, mighty person of God. Now, here's going to be a place where I believe strongly too that many people will be launched out into signs and wonders. Uh, I mean, in my personal life, I've prayed for a few people and, see, and seen them healed. Last night, um, there was a person who wasn't well, and I, I prayed for them. And the Lord told me, um, I mean, not well, not well. The Lord gave me a prophetic word and told me, tell the person it has left them so the person told me this morning they are 100 percent healed and made whole glory be to christ jesus glory to god in the highest who's faithful and worthy to be praised <clears throat> so signs and wonders god wants to use us for in the different ministries and that's why he wants to keep this stream flow, this, this flow clean from contamination. From contamination. From contamination. So guys, notice I'm saying it starts like even in, for example, in our homes where we live and you know in the churches where we go. If people are coming to you again with gossip and slander and these kind of things that contaminate your gifts and you start to feel, oh, you don't understand why you're feeling that way because what goes in and what we see through our eyes affect us and it blocks and, and smear and you feel this way. Just, just avoid these circumstances. You know, love the person, always love. We don't hate nor do we alienate people but there's some things some battles that only God needs to deal with you still need to get on your journey God hasn't tell us to go around just picking up everybody's problem and, and what we can't handle it first Peter 5 7 said cast your cares on me because you care for cast your cares on the Lord because he cares for you Psalm 55 22 says cast your cares on the Lord he will never sustain the righteous to be moved did God tell us if God is telling us to cast what bothers us to him is he telling us then to go and start taking every people, every person's thing on ourselves? Of course not. That, that would be a contradiction. <clears throat> because he's, he's even saying that we can't even handle these things ourselves. That's why he's saying to give them to him. He's not calling us to take in every person's personal circumstance. And if we find ourselves doing that, remember, we're being deceived by the devil. Because the Lord told me, not every good, good, good act is from God. I think I mentioned it in a video before, like there's some people, for example, in Masonic Lodges, they go doing building schools and do, helping the community, holding fairs. Now it looks good. Is that from God? There we go. Every good act and every, you know, thing that looks good is not from God. And in everything we do, be led by the Holy Spirit. 
because we may have compassion or have you know desire to do this thing you don't just rush in and say jesus follow me no we pray and ask the lord what to do and then follow jesus so for years we've been doing things that we're doing things and then saying lord follow me no you pray in the spirit and you wait on the lord and then you follow him but i can guarantee you God will never tell you, go and take every person's burden onto you and, and let yourself become totally weary and weak and can't perform for me. Then it will be a contradiction to 1 Peter 5, 7 and Psalm 55, 22. So uh, praise the Lord and hallelujah. We are growing, we are learning. I'm learning too as the Holy Spirit brings the word, you know. I'm still learning myself, still learning. We'll all be still learning in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. <laughs> and for those who are here and bringing people I would be so well I can speak for myself I was so you know the Lord told me do it and the minute he told me do it within about 10-15 minutes after I obeyed yes Lord your servant listeneth and I ran and I set it the first group and I just ran and got this thing done quickly because delayed delayed obedience is disobedience so in case we are wondering, how could we be disobedient? Delayed. you delaying. God tell you do something. Oh, let me wait till next week. Let me wait till the week after. If God tell you do something, you do it now. Unless he gives you a specific time when to do it. You do it. You get up wherever you are and you do it now. That is obedience. If your child is in the home and he comes and says, Mommy or Daddy, and you said, no, you're going to do it. And then you look around five minutes and see the child playing with the toys. Aren't you going to say, hang on a minute. Then I just tell you to go and take your plate off the table and put it in the sink. Why are you disobeying me? Because delayed obedience is disobedience. So um, <clears throat> I know we are adults. And um, that's why the Lord wanted me by his spirit to, to bring this message. Because he wants us, because we are adults, to act like adults. And to come off of milk and treat this that he's doing and to honor him with participation, to honor him in respect to how he want this, how he want um, this thing to be man. Yes, uh, you put in rules, that's religion. No, not at all. There's a difference between religious borders and rules and stipulations and a difference between when the Holy Spirit gives you a directive because the spirit of the spirit. In the, sorry, in the spirit of the Lord is liberty. There's freedom. Of course it's freedom. God doesn't confound anyone or judge or put someone out. There's no, but still, there's, there's, um, there's uh, parameters that the Lord sets. Guidelines. He gives things. Not just say, oh, go and do it well. I'm with you. What's that? You know. Even King David, you know, and, and, and the soldiers, God gave them specifics before they went into war. You know, no one just goes in, oh, the Lord is with me. So no, you don't do that. You get hurt. You get hurt. So um, praise the Lord and hallelujah. So, that's about it really. Cover anything. So yes, again, um, the Lord wanted some protocol because you know when something starts right, it ends right. And because he, he, he's given me this to do, um, he... You know, he. I'm. I'm just following the way he wants. You know, I. I'm. I'm not here to please myself. And chances are, you know, I wouldn't like to deliver this message, but I've said, Lord, use me. Speak, Lord, your servant listeneth. As I tell you, when you do that, you see, he'll do it. He'll do it, because. I believe there are many people, sometimes it can happen that they're saying, speak, Lord, the servant listeneth. But when they hear that instruction, they're saying, that ain't God. No, because they don't want to do it. No, Lord, speak, Lord, the servant listeneth, because your servant wants you to tell me something that I want to do, that I like. Hmm. It don't work so. Because I'm telling you, the Lord will give you some strange instructions. And he will put you on the spot and in the zone at times. He will. Oh, yes, he will. For instance, a few months back, I repented. A few months back, I 
the Lord said, I don't know if you know, I'm um, discovering the Jewish, Jewish um, Jesus, this um, program on TV. It's, um, anyhow, the Lord sent him here, divinely connected me with him. I've got the pictures and everything. And he came here to the UK and we, we, we met and we, we had dinner. And he gave me a copy of his signed book and everything. Imagine that through the internet. He came to the UK and we met. And we met here in the UK on the 20th of December. It was on the 20th of December, 2012. We met here in London. Rabbi Schreibner and his wife and Michael Hardy, the guy who um, speaks at the end of it. We met here in the UK, yes. Yeah. So um, what I'm saying is that God can divinely connect you through the internet. God can send people to you in whom you don't believe. But how? How does, for example, this person know me? How do they know where to find me? How did they even get my, he can divinely collect, connect you with people. So um, don't despise small beginnings because um, we're all, you know, we're, 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 we're adults. In the sight of the father, we are his children. But we are adults, you know, and... Um, the point in when we start out, we start out on milk, but no one's aim should be to stay on the level of milk. When you have a baby, you start in feeding with, with bottled milk, then you introduce some mashed potato and milk, and then the baby starts eating bread, he starts eating biscuits. A, a child never stays on only milk. You know, the growing process is that you're supposed to come off of milk and mature in the things of God. Remember, there's the rebellious side inside the soul man who is rebellious oh but i don't like how you say that uh -huh. you know that's the that's a part of you that's rebellious you know and jesus said a prophet is not a prophet is not without honor save his own country a prophet is not without honor only in his own country for example people will watch tv channels and oh yes pastor apostle oh yes yes you know and they and the Lord sent the messenger and they treat the messenger with contempt. In their hearts, they hold something against the messenger God sent. Can I tell you the wisdom of God? If there are people we don't like to get along with, he will send a message to that person to you. Remember he spoke through the donkey? Yeah? Believe me, he will send, he will use that person. And the more it keeps irritating you, irritating, the more he will send them. You know, so we can't tell the Lord who to choose and who to send. You know, so um, it's all about honoring and, and respecting the things of God and doing things in protocol. The angels in heaven, you know, there are many archangels, different things, and the different angels, different assignment. They don't have that conflict. They don't have that conflict. They don't have that war going on in heaven. No, in the beginning when it was a war, the enemy got kicked out. The accuser of the brethren who accused the brethren before God day and night, he got kicked out. Since then, that don't happen. You know, it's like the police force. You've got, you know, the chief superintendent here in the UK it works like that. You've got um, superintendents, you've got inspectors and down the rank. You know, these people follow the protocol and he, the chief superintendent, sent... Um, honors the protocol that the, that the politicians and the government put into place and it goes up the line and the army almost the same way you know they follow the protocol and they honor that god also has a protocol for the body of christ and there's this thing about us that oh this is all these rules i don't like this that is too re no it, it is not all the rules it is some people who are rebellious and people often who are functioning in a spirit of rebellion. And the Bible says a spirit of rebellion is as witchcraft. A spirit of rebellion. We love you throughout the whole world, not just to us. We love you in Christ Jesus. We don't condemn you. We, we love you. But um, God wants to deliver persons from this kind of, um, this kind of spirit. You know, because if it's as witchcraft, it means that person is bringing... Is being detrimental to their own selves. But God loves them. 
and he wants to deliver them and bring them to a place of restoration and replenishment and into a place of the blessing. Don't you notice the story even with those going from the wilderness into the promised land, there were some changes that had to be made. Study that story really carefully. They started to murmur and complain of what happened. Not even Moses entered into the promised land. Not even Moses. Moses died on a mountain. Not even him entered into the promised land. Why? You see, because there's some things you have to follow. And when God is taking you into promotion, and when God is taking you into your promised land, there will be some things that you have to follow. He will set some guidelines for you to follow. It's up to you. It's your choice, you know. He doesn't force anything on any of us. But um, that's the way God does things. So I pray that this will be a blessing to myself, to each and every one of you. As the Lord speak it every when I watch a video, when I do it, I always play it back too and listen to what the Lord is saying to me. I don't look at myself, I listen to the words coming out of my own mouth, what God is saying to me. So, um, you know, so yes, let's um, kind of, you know, in the spirit, stick to the flow that the Lord has wants us to do in this prophetic listen voice in your prophetic voices in sound listen remember this bible verse that says um how you edify yourselves in psalms in hymns and 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 you know spiritual sounds will come with psalms and you know prophesy for nations and your town your city even if the lord put a personal prophecy in your heart and i mean i believe is it's obviously right if we're in this little group and someone has an urgent prayer request, but the Lord doesn't want it running too much on our prayer requests. And I, I would, it would probably be even better if there's a prayer request. You saw how I done last time I got the messenger. Just click everyone in the group in, in your messenger and send in the prayer request. They'll still see it. Everyone will see it in their personal messenger. Send in the prayer request in the messenger. And all of us will see it. As a matter of fact, it is coming directly to you. All of us will see the prayer request. But, um, you know, by the Father's instruction, you know, I think he wants the, the main page that comes up focus on, on the flow of his spirit. So what, what we do in the, in the messenger is totally, totally up to us. Whether it's prayer requests, whether it is personal, you know, that's absolutely totally up to us. So... You know, please pray on this word too. And um, if there's anything that I have said that's been misunderstanding, is it wasn't my, I didn't plan to come here to, um, for you not to be understood. So I love you and God bless you. And I hope this video has been a blessing to each and every one of us, including myself and I'm so enthusiastic and just look forward. Whoosh, I feel the presence of the Lord drunk now. Whoosh, thank you, Jesus. And just look forward um, to what the Lord is doing. So again, peace. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and establish thee in his shalom. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, God bless you. Indeed.